Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chess, number 104, featuring a little RPG from Poland. I think you know the one I'm talking about. You guys have been demanding this one, and <laughs> I'm happy to supply it. So here it is, without further ado, CD Projects, The Witcher. And here we are with The Witcher, a game developed in Poland by CD Projekt, and based on BioWare's Aurora engine, the same engine used for Neverwinter Nights 2. And I've seen more than one reviewer who says that uh, CD Projekt actually used this engine better than BioWare itself did. Uh, you can, of course, be the judge of that for yourself. Nazywał się Geralt z Rivi. Był Wiedźminem, zabójcą potworów. Dostał nietypowe zlecenie. Now, I don't know Polish, but I found I liked the Polish voiceovers better than the English translations. You can always read the subtitles. Uh, the voice acting in the English version is, it runs from decent to poor, but the translation as a whole is just really awful. It's, it almost seems like they just gave it to people who got a Polish to English dictionary and uh, trans transcribed it literally word for word uh, without even worrying about the context. <laughs> a lot of it is just laughably bad. Uh, but that's not CD Projekt's fault, so I, I tried to keep an open mind here. Uh, one thing's for sure, it's a very interesting storyline. It's uh, based on a novel called The Witcher by a Polish author, and his name is pronounced... Andrzej Sapkowski. He wrote a novel called The Witcher that's apparently really, really good. At least uh, the guys at CD Projekt really loved it. Uh, they say in the manual that their mission here is to do for RPGs what that book did for fantasy. One thing's for sure, I definitely intend to get a copy of that. Hopefully the translation will be better than the uh, translation in the game. You know, I, I keep bitching about the translation, but since so much of this game is cutscenes, it really has a bad impact. I guess a lot of people can overlook that. Uh, but I, I think there's something like uh, 30 to maybe 45 minutes worth of introductory cutscenes uh, to this. Uh, of course you can skip them, but uh, then you'll miss out on a lot of the story. Now your character is named... Geralt. He is a witcher, and the witchers are tasks are specialists in tracking down supernatural creatures. Uh, your character is a mutant, and as you'll see later on, sort of like in the X-Men, there's a lot of hatred, a lot of racism and prejudice against anybody who's different, uh, which, you know, another thing that makes this game really interesting, a lot of politics and, and things from the real world that typically don't get portrayed in games. Now this, uh, what, what we're looking at here is a story in which a girl has to find a way to cure this princess. Normally a lovely, lovely gal, but uh, she's come under a terrible curse, a particularly violent form of PMS, it appears. And a girl has to pull out all the stops uh, to, <laughs> uh, to defeat her and get, uh, get to spend one night with her. And it's a good way to see what all the different kinds of powers you're going to get later on. Uh, the Witchers have a lot of skill with swords and weapons. Uh, they can also cast spells in the form of signs. And they can make bombs and oils and uh, potions with alchemy. Uh, so there's quite a bit to do, quite a lot of different ways to uh, develop your character RPG style. This is a pretty fun scene, but I'm going to uh, skip ahead here. You, you can watch this when you buy the game. And when you start, you get a choice. This is actually the Enhanced Edition, which, by the way, is available at GOG.com for only $10, DRM-free. Uh, just be sure to use my link uh, to GOG since I get a small kickback on that. And you can pick between Easy, Standard, and Hard. <laughs> I really don't think you want to choose Hard, unless you are a glutton for punishment. Uh, you'll get plenty of challenge with the Standard. The loading times uh, for this game are, are okay. It gets a little irritating because you do die a lot, if you're me, that is. So you're always reloading, and unfortunately it crashes uh, to the desktop quite a bit too. Yes, I have all the latest drivers for my damn graphics card and all that, but still, crash, crash. Uh, just totally random, but again, something very irritating. Fortunately, you can save at any time. Uh, just hit F5, quick save, so... You just have to remember to do that every few minutes. All right, so guess what? I'm sure you've never heard this one before. The character has lost his memory! Total amnesia! And he's back to square one. He's got to relearn 
everything that he, you saw demonstrated in that awesome intro cutscene. Rather convenient. Uh, but it's a way, I guess, to get the... They don't want to start you off with godlike powers right away. That wouldn't be very fun. So let's uh, skip ahead a little bit here and see uh, what the intro plays like. As you might expect, these opening battles are really easy. <laughs> if you die, <laughs> if you die at this point, uh, just give up the game. All right, you're never going to make it. Uh, it's basically just you click on an enemy. After a while, a little flaming sword pops up. That's your next sequence. And you, if you click it at the right time, you'll do the combos. Uh, this actually is quite uh, intricate. It's quite a, you can learn a lot of different sequences and a lot of different options for the different points of the sequence. <laughs> actually quite involved uh, but at the beginning it's just point uh, wait for the sword and click I actually rather enjoyed the uh, the introductory parts it's very exciting a lot of uh, you do have to sit through all those cutscenes uh, which you may or may not like but once the game gets rolling it really uh, rolls at a good pace now I will say later on in this game though it really gets bogged down because you have to you keep traveling from point A to point B and back and forth. A lot of running around. <laughs> it just takes it takes forever and gets really. Uh, it's ex it, for me, it was excrutiatingly boring. Uh, it'd be not later on though. I, I notice you get teleportation options and things of that sort to kind of speed this up. But uh, this isn't a game. If you don't have uh, patience for that sort of thing, uh, you probably want to skip this game. There's also, as I mentioned before, a lot of dialogue. Again, that's something that some people will uh, enjoy and others won't. I think if you like The Witcher, it's going to be, though, because you enjoy the story. Uh, you like these characters. You want to learn more about this uh, fantasy world, which uh, really is unique and is, is worth learning uh, more about. If you've got any kind of imagination, you'll uh, really like this. I'll tell you one thing. I definitely like this story better than the one in Dragon Age Origins. All right, so I just wanted to show you what it's uh, like to get these signs. Now, there's a lot of uh, things in the game to encourage exploring the maps fully. Uh, for instance, you'll you won't be able to get your signs or your magic spells unless you find these uh, circles of power. And then these are tied into your leveling system. And all kinds of options for those. You know, one of the really interesting things about the game is leveling up. Because you have so many places you can put those uh, points into. Uh, so, And you've only got a very limited number of the points. So it really makes it important and it really changes the way you play the game. Now there's a lot of advice online. There's a big wiki dedicated to this. Uh, I didn't really look at any of the clue books or anything. <laughs> I probably should have. Uh, but I can, you know, a lot of this looks familiar from AD&D, uh, strength, dexterity, and so on. Uh, what's different, there are all these uh, complicated chains and a lot of these are uh, optional. You basic, you know, I was t saying before you had these sequences of attacks, one, two, you can add to those. Uh, by spending your points in the more advanced uh, branches, <laughs> but you can also uh, more fully develop the individual spokes. <laughs> kind of running out of uh, terminology uh, to use for this, but you could probably just look at this and int intuit uh, how it works. Uh, but again, there's just so many options. I th the replay value of this game must be really high. Uh, but I don't know what, I haven't played this all the way through. Uh, but at least in the early stages of the game, you really have to make some tough choices. I really found the combat to be uh, fun. It moves quickly. Of course, I prefer the old-fashioned turn-based systems, but uh, this this has its appeal. It's very visceral, very exciting. It's usually a, a bit anticlimactic after you you fight these battles. <laughs> uh, they're followed by picking up all the remains or these long uh, cutscenes, <laughs> as you'll see here. <laughs> I uh, eventually just got to where I was reading the subtitles and just clicking through it uh, to keep the game moving along. I've heard that the... I haven't played Witcher 2 yet, of course. I intend to finish this one first, but I've heard that they fixed a lot of these problems. Now, coming up here is a scene that you definitely don't want to skip. I'm not going to give it away. I'll just let you follow the dialogue here. But this is a good example of uh, what I was saying before with the lack of a clear-cut division between good and evil. Uh, this witch here, you've been helping out the villagers. They think the witch has brought this beast upon them. You find out it's actually a lot more complicated than that. By the end of it, you figure out that just about everybody you've encountered in this village 
How's it been, Honest? They've been doing things that are questionable or downright evil. It's not really clear to you who you should side with. You just have to make the choice. I really like that part of the that aspect of the game. You get sort of tired of uh, these games where it's <laughs> just sort of you almost feel like the designers are forcing you into one path. Uh, this game, on the other hand, uh, you get to make your own path, and I think that makes it more meaningful. All right, I'm getting tired of this. Let's skip forward to the juicy part. Jesteś bardzo piękna, Abigail. Chętnie poznam cię bliżej. And he scores. <laughs> Never seen a game that actually gave you these uh, cards. Every time you seduce a woman, you can go back later and, and look at all the cards you've collected. If you're a sad, sad man like me, you'll want to collect them all! <laughs> I'm not actually sure how many there are in the game, but... A lot of the women, you you can do things for them, rest, you know, run a few quests, give them some flowers or whatever. You get yourself another card. I'm just assuming that they never even considered that a woman might want to play this game. I guess if she did, uh, she might enjoy <laughs> watching... Uh, Geralt work his Witcher mojo. And here's what you could be doing most of the game. You get quests to do things, maybe kill some ghouls, maybe gather 10 of this or 20 of that. Uh, very reminiscent of uh, World of Warcraft. You can track these quests. But you're going to be running around uh, all over these towns, all over the swamps. Uh, trying to find people, it's, they actually take in uh, take time into consideration. So certain people will only be able uh, only be available during certain times, and they go so far as to where it actually is random. So you might have to return to this tavern two or three times at all sorts of different times of the day and night to try to find somebody. Um, again, something that I didn't care for at all. You know, I keep complaining about this game. I guess I should start calling myself the bitcher. Okay, there we are. We've got uh, the first mini game. My favorite is a this dice game. There's also a, a fist fist fighting game. Uh, but this is basically Yahtzee, if you're familiar with that. Dice, poker with dice. Now, what's cool if you play enough of this and win enough rounds, you can play more advanced opponents. I didn't get very far with this. I, I hate gambling in real life, <laughs> for much the same reason as what you see here. I just keep losing. I have horrible luck. I guess you can reload and replay it or however you want to do it. This is a very popular mini game, by the way. I looked at some of the reviews and what people have said they liked about The Witcher. And this was uh, one of their favorite parts, so it is fun. Now here we are in the swamp. Now I only got to chapter three, and that took me about, I'd say a good two days. I, I wasn't keeping track of the hours, but it felt like a long, long time. And this is where the, the game really got, really shows its weaknesses uh, running around the swamp. Uh, the It looks like a wide open world, but you're actually quite constrained. You have to stick very closely to these paths. This guy can leap, from, <laughs> leap over buildings with a single bound, but he can't step over a, a three inch rail. Uh, so that means you generally have to take the long way around. And this is a, a pretty big swamp and there's lots of random encounters or respawning monsters you know I just uh, I was really glad to be to be out of this area even though I'm from Louisiana and should theoretically enjoy swamps one thing that is cool though is you can always uh, be looking around for herbs uh, to use with your alchemy and you can also this is kind of interesting so you won't be able to pick the herb or skin something from a monster unless you've read about it in a book or somebody's told you about it. Uh, so that gives you a little something else to look forward to uh, trying to find these books and scrolls so you can learn how to, to skin things. I'm pretty sure you're like me, right? Uh, they threw these alchemy options in for people like us because they know we're going to go around and pick up every damn herb <laughs> and try to learn every damn recipe. I don't know why we do this, guys. Uh, I don't know. I, in some way, it's fun. <laughs> Tedious, but fun. You know, one thing I thought they did really well in this game was combine magic with melee. 
Now you've got a really integrated system, so you just right click to throw your sign, and that'll have some kind of effect on the monsters that you can uh, take advantage of with your sword, like stun them and then chop their head off, or set them on fire, and then that that will enhance the damage. Okay, the alchemy, you have to be in front of a fireplace. That's a good example of a, a bad translation. Fire pit. And you've uh, basically got to figure out the bases. There's different bases for oil coatings versus potions versus bombs. There's low quality and high quality bases. Uh, you, for the potions, you, you generally want some type of uh, alcohol. And then you can start to use all of these different items that you've collected from plants or from monsters and there's different colors now these things on the left are formula that you find and in, in, again in books or people will tell you about them but what's really cool is you can experiment and just uh, try out things and see if you can discover a potion uh, on your own it'll be unknown and then you can try it out and see what happens now I did this a few times and never was able to actually create anything now, uh, by the way, uh, this uh, reminds me of the Betrayal in Crondor series, if I uh, recall correctly, had a very similar system. Uh, but anyway, I love this this alchemy system. I was able to create quite a few male enhancement potions. I've got a tonic. The hair club for men was interested in. A lot of cool stuff. There we go. Let's get that sword lubed up. Oh. That doesn't look good. <laughs> no, my potion is worthless. Oh, well, we'll kill this guy anyway. Now, these guys will like, actually explode when they die, so you have to use your dodge. It's actually pretty fun. You get a big group of monsters, and it'll actually kill the monsters for you. So stun, kill, dodge backwards. Bada boom, bada bing. Now do that 10,000 times. I thought I would leave you with one of the big fights. This is the last fight of Chapter 2. By the time you get here, man, you have earned it. It's been running around the swamp activating all these obelisks. <laughs> it took forever. <laughs> and now these guys just want to talk. Oh, come on. Two worms with one stone. Ah! Alright, here we go. Time to work out some of that frustration. Uh, one nice thing you, about the game is you can pause it if you get your hotkeys mixed up. We call that active pause. I don't really see anything active about it, but it gives you a little chance if you're not so quick on the keyboard. Now, these guys are casting all kinds of crap on me. They keep stunning me or something, and I can't move. Uh, but fortunately, I thought ahead, and I've taken some potions to give me a little edge. I don't have to kill them. Uh, they'll just stop fighting after a while. We run away. Ooh, and look where you wake up. Please. Skąd się tu wziąłem? Yeah, what can you say? Uh, this is definitely a man's game. The only way, there you have it. The Witcher. Ten dollars. Gog.com. Go get it. Go get it now. And that's going to do it for this week's episode. I sure hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, I'll be back next week with the first part of my interview with the Amiga developer extraordinaire, Mr. John Hare of Sensible Software. Now, this is a fantastic guy. You're not going to believe the stuff he says and does in this interview. So definitely stay tuned. You don't want to miss that. And as always, I want to express my sincerest gratitude and thanks uh, to everyone who has been donating and contributing to this show, keeping it alive. Really, really appreciate it, guys. Uh, you just don't know how much I appreciate that. I'll be toasting you uh, after I'm done here with two brews from Belgrade, Montana. Yes, I like you. I thought they only raised dental floss there. Uh, but they also brew some mighty fine ales. I've got a mythical white and a Diablo dark. <laughs> so really looking forward to those. And uh, as always, I thought I'd leave you with a quotation. Uh, this time, of course, from the author Sapkowski of The Witcher. And it goes like this. Only death can finish the fight. Everything else only interrupts the fighting. Thought that was oddly appropriate, don't you? <laughs> See you guys next week. You think I... Unbelievable. 
You think I would... In these circumstances? The fate of the world is in the balance, and you're thinking about sex? Oh, what the hell. Strip. <laughs>